evening, I'd like to call the Monday, February 3rd, 2020 um, Board of Selectmen's meeting and call it to order. The first thing we have on the agenda is to go into executive session. So I would need a motion to go into executive session for um, 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Public Employees Union, Local 1144, Lyona, um, Town Hall Bargaining Unit, because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares. Um, 21A3, um, second reason to go into executive session is to discuss um, strategy with respect to the litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares Jeremy Bonato versus Town of Freetown Highway Department. And um, number three, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel, Town Administrator David Dimash. And number four, to conduct um, contract negotiations with uh, non-union personnel, um, Town Administrator David Dimash. Um, I'll entertain that motion. Uh, motion made. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Gunwald? Aye. And Ms. Pacheco, yes. Okay, we have just returned um, to our February 3rd, 2020 um, Board of Selectmen's meeting from executive <coughs> session. The next thing on the agenda is to, what time is it? 5.12. 5.30. You're on, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a meeting at, well, not a meeting, but we have something on the agenda at 5.30. We're going to skip that because it's not 5.30 yet. So right now we're going to go to award <coughs> the bid and sign the agreement with the Industrial Communications for the construction of the tower at the new police station. Do I have a motion to approve could I, uh, Could yeah. I just interject a few things? Yeah. Um, I did have a discussion today uh, with uh, Chris at Industrial, Chris Mitchell at Industrial Communications. Um, we are still putting together certain pieces of the contract. I believe that the board should vote to endorse the contract, but just subject to all of those pieces falling into place. One is uh, a performance bond and a payment bond. Uh, two, agreement on the final um, uh, end of construction date. We did have a, a, a pretty lengthy discussion about uh, the timeline in terms of ordering the steel, uh, having the design plans, the engineers approve the design plans, the drawings. Uh, the time it's going to take to get the tower up here, the time it's going to take to actually construct the tower. Uh, they're looking to put the footings in first, so that'll be like six weeks prior to. It's going to be really close, just to let you know, in terms of we're probably looking at a June, the end of June, uh, final completion of the tower, just so the board is going into it with an understanding that it's going to be late June, early July, which the timing of it, I actually think is, is pretty good if it all comes together and we're able to get the purchase order in on the steel and get the project moving. The other thing that came up was on the insurances. The, um, the original proposal that was the RFQ uh, required uh, products coverage um, that uh, was uh, in effect for three years. Um, we did contact the vendor. The vendor did say, actually, the, the requirement, I take that back, came out of my, uh, our insurance representative. They um, had stipulated that that should be a part of it. Um, the vendor informed us that they only um, renew their insurance on an annual basis um, and that the three years would not be possible. They would cover it for a full year. He did state that there is a one-year warranty on it, and if something should happen after the tower is constructed, we are, we're also going to have insurance on it at that point anyway. But I just wanted to be up front and let the board know that what, they're not going to be able to provide that three-year products coverage, and, that, uh, and hopefully that's agreeable to the board in that... Uh, that uh, the contract would not have that provision in it. But it does have the um, one-year warranty, and he, then we will have insurance one. on it after that. Yes. And um, when we talked to the um, the uh, project manager, he said, as soon as you turn it on, you're going to know whether yeah, it's going to Yeah, usually the first ice right. storm. And I actually talked to right. him a little about the whole ice situation. They're designed to accept up to three-quarters of an inch of ice, which is 
Uh, it's designed to a certain specification for this area, and uh, that shouldn't even be a problem. And if anything happens, it's probably going to happen in the first year, particularly uh, <coughs> mechanically or electronically. So I would recommend the board vote to endorse the contract pending um, uh, uh, a successful negotiation of all of the outstanding issues that are currently uh, at hand. Can we see the Council contract? did review the contract also, by the way. Can we see the contract? I mean, I'm not too comfortable. Uh, I I'm not going to read it now. Is it part of your packet? Yeah, it's part of your packet. Yep. Yeah. Just got that today. That'll be tab uh, five. Excuse me? Tab five. Number five. It doesn't have all the supporting documents in it, but. The full contract is 177 pages. So. But you didn't need most of it. And this one, uh, all right. Uh, there also is an attachment F, which is going to be uh, the perform uh, uh, attachment as uh, performance bond and payment bond. But that's pretty much the contract. Again, just to reiterate that this um, the cell tower in this company was already part of the initial bid. It does not. Um, it doesn't have any uh, monetary um, impotence on what's already been voted. So um, it's all part of the contract <coughs> for the police. <coughs> Oh, do we have a vote? Did we vote? No, um, we're waiting. Yeah. He just wants to look it over. Why are you waiting? I thought yes, you, sir. I thought you were negotiating to have somebody put in a towel for free. That didn't work. Didn't work out. Nope. Okay. Um, because they wanted us to lease the tower from them, and then we would lease it for a certain amount of money per month, <coughs> and then they would reap whatever cell carriers went on that tower. So in the long run. Um, it will have placements for three carriers on there, and then in the long run, we'll get the rent from those cell carriers. Once yeah. the tower is up, we actually had a, made a provision for uh, a co-locator's attachment to it. So once the tower is up, it's functioning, maybe a year down the road, we can put an RFQ out to all of the communications companies and see if there's interest there to lease on our tower. It just didn't make sense. It's our land, and we're not, it, you know what I mean? We're going to lease our own land. <coughs> it didn't make sense. So, okay. you're all set? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to endorse pending successful contract negotiations. I have a motion right. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you have a question? No, I said, I think Charlie's trying to. Speak, but you know. oh. Oh. I can't I see, see behind over and over, but I don't hear anything. I don't know what that line is that's across my eyes. It's <laughs> <laughs> showing me fine, so there must be some uh, demon out there. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, next thing on the agenda is elimination of farm animal excise tax. Um, this is on here again because we didn't come to any resolution the last time. Um, David, do you want to speak to it or? I have nothing more to add. Uh, we we had put it on there because we had been in, informed by the assessors that they haven't um, uh, required the tax to be paid since I believe 1963, and at this point they there it's their desire to just eliminate the tax. They don't feel as though it's enough of a, a generator. I don't know how much it would generate. Uh, but uh, that that is not sufficient enough to keep keep it on our books. I believe it will also require a by uh, not a bylaw but a uh, town meeting vote. Well, I, I'm not comfortable with this. Um, I mean, just because we haven't been taxing whatever farm animals are supposed to be taxed, that we haven't done our job is the way I look at it. And we're taxing people that have a dog. And uh, I'm assuming this is a farm animal, so this is income property. Yeah, but it would be a, a working farm, a working I would farm. imagine, with so heads I mean, of cattle. How many, I don't know how many working farms we have in town. I know of at least that. one. Um, and if these animals need to be taxed, <coughs> I think they should be taxed. Uh, and just because we haven't done it, we haven't done our job, so we're just going to... So can we, I think the last time we were here, we wanted to find out if there were any farms in town that would require this farm animal excise tax. And I and think that we have not 
I believe that I, that's I, what we no. the direction we wanted to go in. Before we eliminate something, we wanted to make sure that there was right. nothing on the books that we could okay. foresee I did, taxing. I didn't know. I didn't and know I think that, that there's only I know you that's might have known. One. I know one too. Yeah. But I I think there's a criteria about how big the farm has to be before you can start taxing them. So I think that that would be a question too. Like, okay. what are the parameters of the farm animal excise tax, and do we have any? one that meets those qualifications <coughs> and should we change those qualifications moving forward <coughs> okay charlie hey. you are right with that all right my only thing is as david said we are just voting basically we're just voting to allow this to go on the uh town meeting um, i think this is the first step to allowing it to go on the town meeting um you know i, I do know that they have uh, assessed the tax since uh, 1983. I don't know if you, maybe I don't have an objection to see what the cost would be or, or not be. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that it might be that the cost to assess, to appraise and assess the value of the animals might be more than we would get back from taxes. But I don't have an issue with uh, getting the answer to that. Yeah, I can answer, I can okay. get the questions to the answer to those questions. Okay, Mark. The this, when the assessors were in here, uh, I believe two weeks ago, and this matter was brought up. I believe it was a six dollar per head per annum tax. They talked about all livestock, chickens, and we weren't and, sure though how many. Is there a criteria? It. And I'd like to give the board a couple of photos that I can sign somebody to take, and you can determine whether that's commercial or not. And those are photos within a one mile radius of my location. Okay. Uh, okay. It's not that hard to determine yeah. right. you know, size. And if a, if a property, um, I just look at it from the perspective that if a property is receiving a benefit of a 61A tax exemption, an agricultural exemption oh, for livestock, then we're already subsidizing these operations, and this is a further subsidy. I mean, if somebody has two cows in the backyard, I can understand, but but if it's a 61A property, which is already subsidized, why are, we, why are the townspeople who don't get any benefit from the raising of the livestock further subsidizing these, these properties? I agree. I, I mean, I think that it's worthy to look into, and um, we can put it back on the agenda for the next meeting um, as long as we have. We'll get answers. Okay. I, have, I, have All right. I wasn't aware there were questions that had what, what, the, what the nature of the questions were. Okay. Asked. All right. Just, so that's is there fault. a criteria, like, is there a certain amount of animals that you have to have before you stop taxing them? What is that criteria? How do you assess them? I think that those yeah, Is it a answers. commercial operation? Mm -hmm. Right. Are they selling the meat, the byproducts, the eggs? I think that those are all valid, valid concerns and questions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the next thing on the agenda is a one-year extension to the agreement with Lakeville Community Access Media Lake Cam. Okay, Charlie and I uh, have uh, had spoken via a conference call with uh, uh, Jose uh, at Lake Cam, uh, they agreed to hold uh, their price for the upcoming year to the previous amount that was charged. Uh, we did not discuss entering into a multiple year contract only because uh, we are in the beginning stages of uh, negotiating a uh, renewal with Comcast, uh, which will be need to be finalized by the end of October. So we have done a survey. We, I've actually talked to council about a business plan that needs to be developed. And uh, we desperately need a, a third member on the committee. Right now we can't even meet uh, because we only have two members. And uh, it really needs three members to be effective and to be uh, a legitimate uh, committee. So, you know, my p appeal would be, you know, if anybody would like to become a member of the cable advisory uh, committee. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Uh, and number two, that uh, uh, we just uh, enter into this contract for one year, knowing that it, it could be renewed, or knowing that 
the uh, Com Comcast negotiations may take up some of that that function. So, so okay. my recommendation would be to to uh, renew the contract for one year as an extension. Do you have a motion? motion. Do you have a second? A second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, minutes of January 21st and January 22nd. <coughs> motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Aye. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Administrator's report. All right. Let me. I got a couple things. Um, we did uh, get a change order in number six uh, from uh, the architect relative to the sprinklers and he's looking for uh, the board to approve those. Uh, it just came in, you know, relatively a short period actually came in last Thursday night. So we, it didn't end up on the agenda, but I think it's enough of an emergency that uh, the board should consider uh, uh, approving it so that we can move it forward. So um, this change order is because in the um, attic section of um, the back side where there's an overhang, um, there wasn't sufficient um, fire suppression or sprinklers over there. So um, this is just an increase to um, have them connect to the rest of the sprinkler system instead of putting in a separate sprinkler system and um, getting the uh, coverage that is needed. So it, this is not a want, this is actually a need. And I don't have the amount. It is 14. Yes. Okay. It's hard to read. The amount of the change order, um, and this did go to the committee and it was approved by the police station subcommittee. Um, the amount of the change order is fourteen thousand three hundred thirty-nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. And that is just. I make a motion. Um. That is just to add. The necessary coverage, um, of sprinklers and to connect to the rest of the police station for the attic. Do we know how much space we put a whole attic? The back side of the attic. I'm sorry. I thought there was a question. Yeah, I thought somebody was saying something. No. Okay. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, we still have a pretty um, sizable contingency. Um, I don't have the number um, in front of me, but it's pretty sizable, yeah, and yeah. we're, we're in good shape. So, um, so Charlie made a motion. Did you second? second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else, David? Uh, I have. Uh, I was have talked to uh, Town Council Mark Rich uh, regarding our uh, the petitioned article that had uh, been proposed by um, the uh, residents of uh, of Long Pond relative to the creation of the Lake District, and <clears throat> uh, Mark has been contacted by their council. Uh, for input, um, specifically, I think that the the notion is that um, the the actual way the petition is written, it doesn't really spell out how the district is going to be created, what the membership is going to be, how the taxes are going to be collected, who's, and the mechanics of it. And um, in the in in the past, I know that other towns that I've worked in, when it's a petitioned article, they generally allow the petitioner to bear the full cost and responsibility of doing <coughs> that research. And uh, I'm just checking with the board because I'm making you aware that it was an inquiry from the group uh, to uh, the town and to town council to want to work with town council and I don't know if we want to be incurring that expense I guess I'm just feeling you out I just you know I, I just don't want it to come up to the meeting and then three days before say hey you know uh, let's try to put something together for them it's a petitioner's responsibility to basically defend the article and to provide uh, the parameters for the district that they're trying to create and I would think that that would be something that would have to be addressed on the town meeting floor. Um, I think that we all have a litany of questions 
I do. I'm sure you do. Charlie, you have questions as well? Well, to address it, I, I believe that it's up to the practitioner to uh, have their article uh, muster. Um, and I, I, we have spoken to um, him in the past about this type of uh, issue. And so he's aware of it. So I, I think that you know, this is a private petition and it, <laughs> it floats or it sinks on its own, so to speak. Bad pun there, but uh, oh, uh, that's my opinion. So the I think the other question you really have is whether the petition in itself and the board lending the services of town council prejudices the town's position regarding the petition itself and whether the board or the town feels for or against it. I think there's a real concern about that. Um, just to let everybody in the audience know and whoever watches this meeting, we have a meeting um, with the Lakeville Board of Selectmen. Mom! Mommy! Mommy! <laughs> <laughs> yep sorry <laughs> um so we have a uh, uh, board of selectmen's meeting in lakeville at their new police station next monday at 5 30. 30. um because we don't know where lakeville is on all of this i did have a chance um to talk to the lakeville chair and um she had attended um a, a pond complex meeting because it's not just about Freetown and Lakeville. It also, like I tried to say the other time, it's Middleborough. It's everybody <coughs> down pond from there. So um, she did have a conversation with um, Senator Rodericks. He has put money aside. So, um, you know, we'll <coughs> find out more um, from her on this, but um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that they are uh, feeling any more secure and have a lot of questions just like we do so we'll be able to find out some of those answers on monday do we know of any other similar situations throughout the state i think david alluded that you knew other towns right that went through this or i'm not aware of any oh, okay. i know that i have a boat and it's on the lake and they had made mention at one point that that lake was under a district and i know for a fact it isn't so that was the only thing that i had relative to that i've never uh, been in a community that had either a fire district or a lake district. I just, I feel like it would turn into the haves and the have-nots. Like, I feel like if you live on the pond, you can use the water, but if you don't live on the pond, you can't use the water. And then where is the control from? Are, like, our members going to be equal members of Lakeville? <coughs> I asked, like, what the charter is. Like, what are their rules and regulations, and how do we, if, if um, Auntie M can't afford to pay the taxes, the additional taxes, then she can never use the pond again? I I don't know how. They usually what would happen, they put a lien on the property, and that uh, that lien would stay on the property until generally, until such time that the property was sold and the new buyer would then pay off the lien as part of the transaction, and then they would start the whole process over again. Either they pay the assessment or they don't pay. So that was... Do we have a copy of the charter? They don't, I asked for nothing. one. They don't have any. Oh. There's a lot of mechanics, uh, you know, how it's going to operate that haven't been answered. And the whole idea of the ramp, we talked about the ramp. You know, are we going to have control of the ramp? Are they going to have control of the ramp? That, you know. And where does and that money go to? Yeah. Right. And we're going to be that putting another in revenue kiosk, source? Right. We're going to be paying for kiosks, but then they're going to collect the money. I don't, so there's a lot of, right, exactly. Yeah, and who's um, going to do the billing? Well, the thing is, you're gonna make the, they're gonna make the tax. They're gonna make people who live on the pond pay for the cleanup. But yet, you still have the town beach open to everybody else can come in and use the pond. Right. That didn't pay for it. Well, so how does that work? It, well, I and I think, and I don't want to speak for them because I have not. Uh, they did say this one time that people have their boats and they come in from other places and they don't clean their boats well. Right. So it could stop the weeds to grow and blah blah blah. I understand all of that. But we can't control who goes on the pond. I mean, the pond is an open area that we all want to be able to use at any time. We want to be able to use it. And to say you can't go on the pond is, I don't necessarily think that that's fair. Like, I don't think it should be inclusive. Like I said in the beginning, it's the haves and the have-nots. And I don't I don't like that concept. So, ma'am? Um, I heard rumors. So I don't know if they're correct or not, but it seems that I had heard that there was going to be like $50 charge to go down to the boat ramp. Is that correct? 
Not from okay. this board, no. <laughs> no. Everything is r rumor and hearsay at this point. Well, that's what I'm saying. I this is what I heard, so I'm asking, you know, is, yeah. is that nope, I don't no, know. Because that would be really a hardship. I mean, to think that to put your boat in the water on a Sunday afternoon, yeah. you know, that it would cost us fifty dollars to go down and use it. If that's the case, yeah. and I don't. Well, know the problem is so. we don't know any of the answers to those types of questions. But this board has not increased the fees, so whatever the fees were last year, and I, I don't know off the top of my head, we have not increased the fees to use the boat ramp over there. So I, that's just, if that's out there, that's maybe... No, I mean, if, if this happened, if, if you were to have this group come in, that these are some of the changes that we might see. Possibly, but that wouldn't be from this board, and those are some of the questions that we have. Thank you. You're welcome. And also... On February 15th, right? Mm -hmm. That's voting day. Yep. And we don't have a lot of our answers, our questions answered. So, so how are we supposed to vote against something that we, a lot, I, I live right next down the street from the guy, and I pulled him outside last time. We had uh, two meetings ago, I want to say now. There was a lot of stuff that was not answered. Do February, you know, February 15th, we're going to have this vote. But my mother doesn't know. People that are actually are getting affected, I, a lot of them don't even know. I've had a lot of people, even on pre-towners, there's, there's a lot of questions that are not answered that needs to happen, I would say, before voting. Agree. I totally agree. So one of the things that we're definitely going to do is make sure that we get the one call out and let people know that there's definitely a town meeting. I have seen signs, the vote yes signs. I have seen some of those signs already out there. Um, I do stock Freetowners occasionally, <laughs> um, let it be known. Um, I use my real name, let it be known. Um, but uh, uh, there is like a subliminal message in, within Freetowners, um, like, you know, how beautiful the pond is. It is a, it's a beautiful pond, but we all should be able to use it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, we are going to try to get the word out as best we can, um, but it's it's their petition, right? They're gonna get their people there, and um, I've been trying to talk to my people, and I'm sure George is doing the same thing, it, and Charlie. Is it just for the, the voting, is just for the people that are gonna be affected? No, it's for the town of Freetown. Vote. This this will have, this is for the town of Freetown, so, so maybe every should voter to, should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And listen, because it will have an effect on all of us. Okay. Anything else to add, George? Well, if you feel strongly about it, get some signs out there and get the word out. Mm -hmm. Charlie, anything to add? No, no. Um, <laughs> it, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. Anything else on your police station update? I mean, anything else on your town administrator's <laughs> report? Sorry. Because um, I'm going to uh, get to Wendy as soon as you're... Uh, all right. I, I, I'll go with it really quick. Uh, I just wanted the board to be aware that we did get a grant uh, jointly, regionally, with uh, the town of Lakeville uh, in the amount of $166,000 uh, through the Community Compact IT Grant Program. Uh, the purpose of the grant is to buy a scanner, but we're also going to have a company come in and start scanning um, essential records uh, and having a, a mechanism by which to store digitally <coughs> important town records in, in, in a file and have redundancy. The software program will not only store them here, but they'll store them out in the cloud as well as a couple of different other locations. So the records, they'll have a hard copy, but you'll also have uh, backup and redundancy in the process. So. That's a good thing, and I just wanted the board to be aware of that, and the townspeople be aware of it that we're uh, moving us into uh, a new era of record keeping. And I know that Jackie's extremely happy about it. Um, I've also talked to the town of Lakeville. Uh, we've had some preliminary discussions <coughs> about putting a grant application in for a shared town planner, and I'm just floating that balloon, so to speak, to see if that might be something that might be of interest. Uh, decision doesn't have to be made tonight, but just to give you a heads up that there's something we could potentially look at, uh, do it as a circuit right of the first year, uh, where it's probably, you know, X amount of dollars is paid and then it decreases over a period of time. 
with both communities sharing the professional services of a, a town planner. They're interested in doing it. They brought that to me. Um, we also, um, I met with um, the planner, um, the building inspector, with Lisa Sullivan, who is the Green Communities Director, and with uh, Eric Arbeen, who's uh, with SERPED. We did apply for a grant uh, from SERPED back in uh, the fall uh, to uh, begin the steps of the town becoming a green community. And uh, one of the issues that has everybody uh, uh, that I've heard objections about are, are potential uh, items that could cause uh, people concern is the stretch code and how the stretch code affects uh, individual homeowners. And um, <coughs> the, uh, I'm going to have, uh, in, uh, in the beginning of February, the first meeting of February, I'm going to have an expert uh, come in uh, from uh, Lisa uh, Sullivan's office to give you an overview of the stretch code and what it is and how it pretty much at this point mirrors the state building code so there's really no uh, impact on new construction, doesn't affect additions, doesn't affect uh, rehab. Um, it's strictly new construction residential and new construction industrial. So. They will address all the issues and concerns that uh, the town may have and hopefully will answer some of the questions. It's important to note that 278 communities out of the 351 communities in the Commonwealth now are green communities and that uh, by becoming a green community we're guaranteed at least the first year a minimum grant of $125,000. Uh, and talking to Lisa, she feels that that could even be higher than that, somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000 to address energy concerns in our buildings, to assist the, the schools with the boiler issues, because that was made mention of during our regional finance committee meeting. And uh, just as a resource, and, and that over an annual period now, I know the town of Lakeville has been a green community. Uh, since 2013, they've gotten over $800,000 in grants to do all kinds of um, energy uh, uh, initiatives in the community. And the, not only are they making those changes with the, the state's money, but the cost that they're saving by affecting those changes is substantial also. So um, I'm just letting the board know that I'd like to have um, um, Lisa's uh, expert come in on uh, March 2nd and, and talk to the board about the stretch code. I'd like Jeff to be there at that meeting as well then. It's going to be a board meeting. That's why I'm suggesting it. Jeff Chandler. Our building. Our no, building. it's going to be, I, I was going to have that person come into the board of selectmen and give an overview of the stretch code and the green community program. Right, but I would like our building to inspect oh, oh, to be right, at that meeting you. as okay. well. Yes, he will be. Um... Freetown screw update. Uh, I've had some discussions with Serpet about that. Um, I am going, we have a, a $5,000 um, amount or balance in the uh, MVP grant. Uh, I have uh, been talking to Serpet about that. Uh, we can transfer that money over to do what's called a wetlands delineation on the Kushner parcel. I'm going to pursue that uh, with SERPED and uh, get an idea specifically uh, in terms of doing some test borings over there and see what's on that parcel of land before we actually agree to take it. Um, the, uh, just the final thing is uh, I'm in process now doing the budget review with all the department heads. I have actually uh, have Kim actively involved in it also this year so that we uh, uh, are putting our heads together to take a look at everybody's individual budgets and see areas, see if there are areas where we can reduce the budget. So, okay, that's it. Charlie, any questions? No, I heard it. I'm quick. Okay, Charlie, uh, George, questions? Okay, Wendy. <laughs> oh, and friends. Thank you very much for squeezing us onto your packed agenda. I appreciate it. No worries. Um, for anybody who doesn't know who I am, I'm Wendy Gosha, president of South Coast Neighbors United, group that fought uh, and was victorious against the LNG and pipeline 
uh, proposal in our communities. Um, and we have now undertaken another campaign um, that does affect our community. It is a proposal by a company called Parallel Products that has moved from Shawmut Ave in New Bedford to the business park in the north end of New Bedford on Duchesne Boulevard, right off of um, exit 7 off of 140. What um, is the name of the company again? Parallel Products of New England. Parallel? Yep. Um, in, on Shawmut Ave in New Bedford, they operated a glass recycling company. Um, they've moved and they're expanding, and what they're proposing is very different than what they've been operating so far. Um, and so Tracy Wallace, she is, a mem she is a resident of the north end of New Bedford, living in that area, reached out to South Coast Neighbors United um, to find out our stance on the, on the project. She learned a lot of information about it, proposed it to us, joined our board, and we have now undertaken this campaign. And so we're going around to the bordering communities to make sure that everybody's aware of this project and the detrimental impacts it'll have on our communities and in, in, in the area, um, because the problems that it will present will not be isolated to just the business park of New Bedford. Um, yeah, what is the product there? So, well, Tracy's going to speak a little bit more about the, the meat and potatoes of it because she knows a lot more about the project itself. And so, this is Tracy Wallace, and she'll share that information. Yes, thank you, Wendy. Um, thank you for um, letting us come in and, and speak tonight. Um, <laughs> Like Wendy had said, I reached out to her about a year ago when I had heard about a company coming into the business park. Um, they're going to be located at the old Polaroid site, which is 100 Duchesne. Um, that site has been known to have had significant pollution um, occur on it over the last probably several decades. Um, this company had gained entrance into the business park by the city of New Bedford. Um, they proposed a glass recy recycling facility, <coughs> which um, they have started processing. Um, then they modified site plan for um, a waste facility, and they're on over 70 acres, and they sent in a document to the Massachusetts Environmental Protection Act Office, MEPA, for, um, for approval for Basically, their phase one would be glass recycling, solar canopy, and side um, rail spur from the, the tracks that go behind the, the business park. And then phase two is going to be an MSW, which is, which is municipal solid waste, and C&D, which is construction demolition, and biosolids. Biosolids is human waste, is sludge that you basically dry in some sort of fashion, whether it's through thermal oxidation or gasification, um, and then basically sell it off as fertilizer or send it to landfill. Um, the communities in Boston are taking their sludge from Deer Island and sending it to Quincy to have it made into biosolids, and that company is selling it as fertilizer this fertilizer is, has been being sold since the mid to late 90s. It is on parks, it is on forest areas, um, it is on farmland. So it is of concern because of the um, high, high quantities of PFAS which are now being found. PFAS are forever chemicals that are now <coughs> of great concern um, to the EPA to um, a lot of different states. Um, the facility in Quincy was found to have 18,000 parts <coughs> per trillion of three PFAS chemicals. The US Environmental Protection Agency recommends that municipalities alert the public if two of the most common chemicals add up to 70 parts per trillion. And this had 18,000 parts per trillion. Uh, Massachusetts uses those same levels for five PFAS PFAS chemicals. So this propose, poses a, a significant health risk. Um, by drying these biosolids, about 52,000 gallons of discharge will be put into the New Bedford sewer system and go to the treatment plant. Um, there is concern of um, stormwater runoff, things like that, of contamination of the Cushnet Cedar Swamp um, and surrounding water areas. 
Um, the city of New Bedford did hire an independent law firm to oppose this project. The mayor is on opposition to this project and the city council is op in opposition to this project. Um, the draft environmental impact report, which <coughs> was parallel, one of Parallel Products' first initial permitting or ap approval phases to obtain, um, they submitted that draft environmental impact report. That commenting period has just ended and the Secretary of Environmental Affairs, <coughs> Energy and Environmental Affairs has given the approval for that certificate. So what that means is the company now has to put forth an environmental, a final environmental impact report, which will, there will be another commenting period on that. So once that is put in, there's more commenting. There's several approvals and permits <coughs> in which this project has to obtain. Once it obtains full MEPA approval, it will then go to the Mass DEP, and then after site suitability, it will then go to the city yeah. of New Bedford further. Um, so what we're asking today is that um, you'll join us in <coughs> opposition to this project. Not only does it um, present environmental impacts, but it also is going to impact air quality. It's going to impact um, lifestyle, <coughs> values. thank you, property value. Um, they're projecting about, they're varying their numbers in terms of trucks. Originally it was over 400 trucks per day, um, per day truck trips, trips per, per day. day. Um, now it's at about 300 truck trips per day. Um, I'm sure you are all familiar with Exit 7 to handle that kind of, of truck the increase in traffic is going to be extreme. They could find different back roads that could affect Freetown. They could find different back roads of Freetown. They come up 44. Yeah. So um, they're going to use um, ionization systems to control for odor. So these ionization systems can be harmful. They can be damaging to lungs, chest, coughing, shortness of breath, etc. cetera. Um, The trucks are going to carry sewage sludge in in two different ways, in liquid sludge and in dried cakes. These dried cake trucks were going to be open air trucks. The company has now come back and said that they will be covered trucks. Well, does covered mean with a tarp over the top? blowing around. So what, what does that mean? Does that mean enclosed? Um, so there are a lot of, lot of questions. The Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs did, um, in her approval, give eight pages worth of um, findings in which they have to address. So there's a significant amount of information that they have to address um, that covers contamination uh, water systems, air quality, etc. Um, but it does pose a significant threat to to the surrounding communities, not just to New Bedford, but to really all of the South Coast. This is going to be a massive operation, and I think once people know what the operation is, no one is going to want to be living within 25 miles of it. Um, they always say that <coughs> There is a significant waste problem, that we're in a waste crisis in the state of Massachusetts and in, in the country, but if the Mass DEP were to just enforce the regulations they have currently, we could see a reduction of waste by about 40%. Our so um, argument is so why do you keep building more waste facilities correct. to take care of the problem rather than addressing the waste production itself. Right. Wait, stop it. So <laughs> there, the um, the site in Rochester has now gone um, for um, an amendment to increase their tonnage per day of municipal solid waste. And then there is a site <coughs> in Taunton, which actually wasn't supposed to be deemed for solid waste in the Miles Standish Industrial Park, that has now put forth a site amendment for um, 1,000 ton per, tons per day of MSW. So now if you're having one in Taunton, you've got one in Rochester, and now you've got a third in in the business park in, in New Bedford. Well, now you've got three locations within a 25 mile triangle of one, of one another, all in the South Coast. It's It seems like 
this area is being burdened disproportionately um, and at the detriment of, of the people that, that live here. Um, I put together some packages with additional information that Great. could be helpful. Thank um, you. Yep. I'll leave an extra one, Charlie. Um, the town of Acushnet has joined in the opposition. City of New Bedford is against this project. Um, we will be also going to Dartmouth because these all these towns abut that property. Um, so residents in those towns will be impacted by it. Um, <coughs> so if, if you're able to vote and agree to take an opposition stance with us and, and support our campaign, all we'd ask is some action items as they go through the permitting process of submitting letters expressing the concerns that you have and how it will affect the, the residents. That's pretty much it. We've, we've, we've missed the, the draft environmental um, impact report commenting period, but there'll be a final one for, right. um, for NEPA, and then so forth and so on. The, um, the permitting process and timeline is in there yeah, Okay, well. that, that was um, one of my questions. There's a letter in there from Senator Montigny in opposition of the project. There's a le letter in there, how many pages? Eight pages from KP yeah. Law, hired by city, the city of New Bedford against the project, aligning uh, all of their ma major concerns about it. Um, there's articles in there talking about biosolids um, and how it impacts neighborhoods in other areas where they're already op operating. There is articles in there about P PFAS and how dangerous those are um, and the, the, thing, the findings they're, they're coming to. Um, they've shut down farms in Maine where they've been using the, that, the fertilizer that the, the company in Quincy's been selling for 30 years. The, yeah, they can't sell their milk anymore. There's a farm out in Maine. So I have a couple of questions yep, for you. Sure. Um, the other businesses in the area, have they written letters of opposition as well? I'm not sure on that. Um, I have heard that, I don't, I think it might be in KP Law's um, letter. letter that okay. they submitted that's in your packet that does state that the companies within the business park are concerned. Um, I have been told that a lot of the companies tend to st stay out of the other companies businesses um, and so forth so I'm not sure if how comfortable those companies are in taking a stand against this one I'm hopeful that we can gain their support um, fully on record so that that would be something in the future to, to do all right and um, do you know how big is this facility or is that in here too um, so the very first page is a fact sheet that we actually put together that explains a lot of the, the, the specifics about the project. Does it say how big the... It might even be in one of the letters. So the project will be um, constructed in two phases. Phase one includes construction of a 27,500 square foot building for glass recycling and processing and a 23,000 square foot bunker building attached to the north side of the new glass re recycling. Then a 22... 1,800 square foot side bunker building. Um, it will occupy approximately 50,000 square foot portion of an existing 92,000 square foot building. Um, so it sounds pretty big. Yeah, it does. Um, and have you, do you know what the process and how the process works? Because um, being involved in some of the new process sort of manufacturing things that are around here, um, we've grown to uh, ask a lot of questions about yeah. how processes work. She's the one what is the air, I mean, what is the standard air quality after that? Mm -hmm. uh, are those things, and really just a word of wisdom, um, you need to get on DEP from day one. You right. cannot wait until DEP yeah. gives them a go letter. Right, right, that's understood. We've, I've actually already been at a meeting with Mass DEP in the beginning of December. Um, okay. So they've actually put forth comments of concern about this project as well for okay. the company to address. Um, so. so do you have any questions, George? Oh, this is just scary. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So, um, Tim, can you put on the next agenda for us to vote um, on a letter of opposition? Mm -hmm. um, and then we can go from there. Um, we only had a presentation from you tonight, so um, I wouldn't want to be against open meeting law. So we'll certainly put it on for the next one. 
and um, maybe we can reach out to, we have KPLR as well, mm -hmm. maybe we can snag one of those letters from them and use that as our opposition letter. Mark, Mark Rich is the one that wrote that one. Then it yeah. will be very easy yeah. to text tomorrow yeah, to find out. Yeah. Perfect. And if you have any questions, you have my email. I do. You can reach out to me. I can give you traces if you need. Does yeah. anybody yeah. in the audience have any questions for them? I have a suggestion for the board. <coughs> to, so the board isn't, uh, the three board members aren't unilaterally deciding to oppose this project, possibly circulate a petition in town for and against, leave it open for whether it's two weeks or a month. I'm sure that more people are going to sign the petition that are opposed to it than go out of their way to sign the petition that they're for it. And then the board will then be representing the townspeople and not opening us up to, I don't know, potential litigation because it seems that I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to oppose something or wouldn't want the board to oppose something based on the board's sole discretion. And if the townspeople <coughs> supported the board, then the board has grounds, has footing to oppose it. I, 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 I it hear you, and I hear you. I understand my concern. I hear you. Um, but we've done a letter of opposition to the LNG as well, um, because other communities were doing the same thing. If we don't do a letter of opposition and they don't get their footing in the ground, I don't want them coming to our town. And that's my fear. And I think we can do both. I think we can put a petition at all of the, the stores, you know, for people to go in and sign it. But I think we know what we want in town as a business, and I don't see us wanting this kind of business. We already have two headaches, mm -hmm. one ongoing, one, one coming. I'm opposed to it. Okay. I, 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 I hear you. The, I so let's do both. To go out I think left. we can do both. And I think that if you do have people that sign the petition, then that just, I think that gives you another. We have a petition. Perfect. <laughs> um, so we'll put it on for the next agenda, and I think that if, we can do both. I think that's cool. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Because all I all I can envision is um, New Bedford says no, and they come they not, not yeah not right, and not maybe not on the East Freetown side, but where the other problem is on the Asona side, and that's not that would be a nightmare. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn it over to you. Security cameras at the Freetown st transfer station. Oh, we're uh, holding it off until we get specs. Okay. All right. Um, and then a uh, memorandum of agreement with town administrator um, regarding the salary, uh, his 2% um, cost of living increase. Um, we just have to sign that. Do you have a motion to sign the memorandum of agreement? Motion that. Do I have a second? Okay. Uh, we're on the uh, town highway plan, correct? No. No. You faded out a little bit. Oh, sorry. We're yeah, just I'll, we're I'll signing the memorandum of agreement with David. Okay. So George made the motion. <coughs> You're going to second it or not? Okay. What, I, I'm a little. Uh, what we what motion. we voted on upstairs has to be done in open session, so that's what right. we're voting on. So we're voting on the the agreement between the town and the town employees. Is that it? No, David. No. Just David. David. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry. The one that we voted on upstairs. The, right. Okay. The, uh, okay. I, I, I get it now. Okay. I'll make that second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the memorandum of agreement with the town employees regarding sick time, that's on hold. The memorandum of agreement with um, the collective bargaining highway, that is on hold. Um, so moving right along, letter of resignation from the library director, Dorothy. Stanley yes, I was just looking okay. for that. <laughs> I don't have it, so Wait, my computer died. Um, anyway, oh yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so this letter of resignation would be effective um, July 2nd, 2020. She is really retiring, but it's a letter of resignation. Do I have a motion to accept? Motion. I'll make the motion. Uh, George already made it. Do you want to second it? Okay, I'll second it then. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and then um, appointment of Douglas Mungin as reserve police officer, <laughs> effective February 3rd, 2020. Motion made. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then appointment of Katrina Gonzalez um, 
as temporary clerk for the Conservation Commission at the rate of 16 20. 20. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, that's it. Anything else? All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion made. Do I have a second? Motion seconded. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Bye, Charlie.